Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another session of Speak Your Mind. We're live, live and direct tonight. Tonight we have a lot of buzz, a lot of information. We hope to exchange and have that dialogue with you, the viewing audience. So call your friends, your family, and all the folks that you know like to watch the Speak Your Mind show because we believe this is where you get the right information. This is the show where you are able to interact and get your information out there, your concerns out there that you know you need addressing. Because I believe every week, every week, ladies and gentlemen, I know for a fact, not believe, I know for a fact that every week, when you the concerned citizens call in with your concern and your views on whatever the subject or issue is, um, the people who are responsible for making a difference in your life, they're watching. And if they're not personally watching, they, trust me, they have people watching. There are other people watching on their behalf. And those people are reporting. Every week, I have a debate with somebody on something that was said because maybe they didn't hear it right. Or maybe they wanted to share their views, which is fine. I wish sometimes those same people have the courage to call the show and share their views because then all of us can learn from each other. So... Happening right now, we're just going to give you a little intro, then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Tonight on my agenda, I'm sure when Courtney Reach will have some more things to talk about. And then again, the show's open, it's your show. It is called Speak Your Mind, not my mind, your mind. So if you want to call on any subject, no matter what it is, call and let us know. A um, couple things that I want to put out there just to feed your mind, um, tease you. Um, of course, we have... Um, a new law that was passed this week. I really want to get you guys take on it. Um, it, it, it was, it, it's an attempt to equalize or balance the scale between our kids in a community. And I thought it was a, it was a step in the right direction. Um, I would like to see some more, some more of this, you know, and I'll tell you a little bit about that later on. But of course, that law, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, you know, again, it, it, is, it is something to help balance the scale. Some of us I um, think it's going to wreck families and, and, and all of this other crazy way of thinking. But at the same time, it's, it's, some of us believe that it's, it's only right that kids who are born out of wedlock, born to the side woman or however you want to classify it, children who are not born in a relationship where the husband and wife, where the man and woman is married, um, those kids now will have some way of, of balancing the scale. And, and, and I think it's right. It's only right. All kids shall be born equal. And if, if any man who decides to go out and have um, a side child outside of his relationship, that child should have rights to whatever it is you leave. Um, of course, you do have a choice. If you want to leave them anything in the end, you have an opportunity. You can leave a will. If you don't leave a will, then you just leave a chaotic situation. So um, it's good for all sides and everybody still have control of their life. So I want to talk about that tonight. I want to get your take on it. Um, happening right now, happening right now, um, we have another historical moment in the BVI history. You'll see some of the images on the screen right now. We have a new party launch tonight. The PEP, People Empowerment Party, launch tonight. Uh, Chairman Alvin Christopher, President Shawanda Wheatley, uh, and the, uh, the Master of Ceremony was Mr. Larry Reimer. So we have uh, three folks who launched a new party tonight. There was no introduction of candidates. That's not what it was about. It was really about introducing the party, and it was, it was to a full house. I don't know if all those people, you know, like in the States, they'll have uh, what they call seat fillers. Um, I don't know if those people are all seat fillers, but... The room was full, so that's exciting for all of us who, who, who are political junkies. I am one of those. I like politics. Um, so uh, we have a new party launched tonight. And I think the energy of the party was the same concept, same idea as what I remember the National Democratic Party did when they were, when they were relaunching themselves again uh, for the last election. 
I think uh, in the beginning it was only a few people um, that introduced the party. They launched the concept of the National Democratic Party coming back into the game. And then as time went on, they start introducing the candidates. So uh, uh, that's the same thing tonight. I want to get your take on that. And we, we're going to talk a little bit about that. You know, also in the news to add into that, to tie into that, you know, we have the Virgin Islands Party government. Uh, the Virgin Islands Party, um, not government, but the Virgin Islands Party, uh, VIP. And of course, you know, if you, if you wasn't watching the news or reading the news, um, the, the leader of that, that party um, announced that next month, next month for all you VIP lovers, all you VIP supporters, all you VIP believers, um, those of you who want to see the party continue, um, some of us believe it's dead. It's dead because of whatever the reasons are. Um, but all of you who want to see the party continues, there's an open invitation to, 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 for next month. I believe it's the 23rd. If I'm wrong on that, please send me the correct date. Um, and and, and it's, it's according to the, the, uh, um, um, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. O'Neill. It's an opportunity for all of those who don't want to see him continue to come and, and lend your voice, vote. Um, if you don't want him in, vote him out. If you, if you want him there still, keep him. Um, it's also going to be an opportunity. I think it's really for the Congress. I don't think it's, I don't think it's the, um, uh, for the general population. I think it's for the Congress uh, of the Virgin Islands Party um, people to come in and select different officers for different posts, secretary, you know, treasurer, whatever the situation is. Um, and, and it's funny, while I was in, while I was at, in the, um, the, the launching just now, I heard something that was a, a really nice question. And the questions are hard, by the way. Of course, you know, Zan is down there, and he's putting it out there like, like it's wildfire. And uh, there was a really interesting question, you know, about um, the, two, the, two, uh, the two members, um, Shawande, who was part of another party, um, and, and uh, Mr. Christopher, who was part of the Virgin Islands party. And, and the question was posed to, to Mr. Christopher, has he resigned from the Virgin Isles Party government from the Virgin Isles Party and, and uh, he, he said um, well he didn't answer yes or no but he simply said um, uh, if you can show him the structure based on the Constitution there should be some structure in place and, and, and if the structure is not in place uh, there's certain things that has to be done if it's not done um, by, by, by your own action or the action of the, 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 the party you can, you can be kicked out of the, the party so um, I don't think he, he, he wrote an official letter, but it was a very interesting question. I didn't ask the question, I just, I heard it. And, and of course, again, all the media are in the front. Uh, I see most of them there, ZBVI, Z-Rod, the whole nine, uh, all the local newspapers were all there. So that's still happening right now. If you still want to go down and, and land the air right now, it's question, and, ask, uh, question and, and answer session. You can go down and, and uh, you know, see what's going on, but I do want to get your feedback. It is something a lot of us out there who vote probably want to be a part of. I mean, regardless of who you vote for the next election, it's going to be hot. The last one was hot, this one going to be hot. Um, so now we have three known parties. There could be one or two more in the future. We have three known parties um, now established in the, in the Virgin Islands, BVI. Uh, we have the PEP, the VIP, and the NDP. So you can choose which one of the P you, you want to um, um, uh, uh, be affiliated with. It, the choice is there. A lot of you are saying, oh, uh, we don't really know uh, who we're going to vote for if we don't vote for the NDP. Uh, we're not sure what we're going to do with the Virgin Islands Party. Um, so you have options. It's up to you to to exercise your democratic right, and I believe in that as well, exercising our democratic right. And, and we should not, we should not be, be misled by anything that's not on the table. If it's not on the table, tell them, you know, run them from your house, I keep saying, run them. So what we're going to do, um, again, I'm going to open up the phone lines early tonight before my colleague Courtney come in. Uh, we're going to take a quick break um, so I can get my thoughts together. And then, uh, again, I just put 
two really hot topics out there. I know both of those will affect pretty much the general population in the BVI. But again, if you want to open up the phone line with something else on your mind, feel free to do that. So we're going to take a quick break for the people that make this show uh, possible, and then we'll be right back. Say hello to the Digicel DL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4-inch display, front-facing camera, and a 5-megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast, so you can do more, play more, and share more. And choose to download from over a million apps available in the Google Play Store. The Digicel DL700, the latest addition to the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Be extraordinary. Digicel. All right, so welcome back. So on the break, I got like three or four texts, so I'm gonna hit you on those texts real quick. Uh, one person said the VIP is dead. Um, don't rule them out yet, we don't know. Uh, that's the nice thing about politics, you know, sometimes it seems one way in the beginning, and then down the road things change, and things could change all of a sudden. So uh, next month we'll see what happens. You know, again, the Congress is summoned to a meeting. I think it's ironic that you know, um, uh, Mr. O'Neill made it himself clear when he was being interviewed. He was interviewed, I think, by telephone with uh, BVI News and Platinum. And, you know, they all talked about um, in, uh, Mr. O'Neill saying that in the Constitution, they were supposed to meet six times a year, six times a year to have some real structure in the party. Well, they haven't had any in two years. That's 13 different meetings they miss. Um, so it begs the question whether or not there's a real party there or not. And of course, one of the articles, if you read the blog in one of those sites, um, someone wrote a really nice commentary. I got to say it was well written. Uh, they give you the history, the background of the Virgin Isles party. They give you uh, information that a lot of us young people like myself probably wasn't aware of. And, uh, but it was nice to see somebody put it in the context it was put in so we could fully understand what was going on. And Mr. O'Neill, you know, all rights to him, you know, all respect to him, you know, he has done his part. I personally believe that, you know, if, if it's about party, if it's about the structure, if it's about moving the system forward, then you should have already had, you know, uh, some kind of meetings to decide which direction you want to go. And, 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 and my, my concern or my wanting to anybody start any party is that if you start a party, the party is not about you. It can't be about you. You starting a party. If it's about people, then you have to have a democratic system where people can select who they believe will be the best fit or the best rule or the best leader. So, you know, I mean, when you look at a lot of structures, a lot of businesses, say, throughout the United States, we, we use the United States all the time because of our understanding with a lot of things there. You know, you have big companies. Take Apple, for example. Apple Steve Jobs lost his company for 10 years. This man went out, bent over backward, built a company that's now worth billions of dollars. But for 10 years, this man lost his company. It was taken away from him. And only because of his genius, only because of his, the, the, the fact that he was so smart, he was able to get back that company through smartness, through creativity. That's what it's about. So anybody out there who think, you know, I'll start a party and I'll be in power, I'll be in leadership position for a long time, no, that's not the way it runs. I mean, you look, at, look around us, you know, St. Lucia, um, even Jamaica, you look at the changes that was made there, with their, with their government. I mean, I can remember just going back before Ms. Uh, Simpson Miller became the Prime Minister. Um, 
you know, she was the interim prime minister because the, the party that she was part of was run, ruling the country, but somebody else was in charge. And the party decided to take that person out by vote, and she became the interim president. And then after that, she became the president again. So that's, that's the real democratic way. So we shouldn't have been here now two, almost two and a half years later talking about having, having uh, meetings, Mr. O'Neill. You know, I mean, come on, you're, you're a brilliant man, and I, and I know you know better than that. And, and it, it almost seems like it's desperation now. That's what it seems like. You know, I mean, you have, you know, two known members who are challenging, in my opinion, who are challenging the position as to whether or not its structure is sound and whether or not they want to continue in that. And, and, and even in that blog, I was listening, reading that, uh, that comment, you know, uh, they're saying that even those two members, um, uh, Honorable Fry and Honorary uh, Fraser, um, might even have um, challenges on a wider base outside of their district. So they have to really think about their political future, you know, if they're going to be associated with a party that might be, might be deemed dead. Uh, I don't think it's dead, but at the same time, I know there's going to be a lot of, um, a lot of hard work, um, you know, pushing that. Next text I got was said, uh, Alvin can't win. <laughs> we, we, uh, we don't know. We don't know. Again, it's going on right now. It's looking at what's going on down there. You know, um, Alvin uh, launched a party tonight, PEP. We have Shawande, um, uh, uh, Wheatley. We have um, Larry Reimer. And we have a full house. It was a full house tonight. You know, a lot of people in the audience just uh, listening, observing, um, taking it all in. So those of you who missed it, there it is. There it is. It's real. It, uh, I assume it's a registered uh, organization vying for election. And as time go on, they're going to start introducing new people. Um, I don't have much to say about the PEP because I don't know much about the PEP. Uh, but I did get a, a text and asked me if I'm a member. No, I am not a member. No, I am not a member. I am not running for office. I have no interest in running for office this time around. Maybe next time around. So people don't, don't you know, get that thought out your head. I'm not interested. I'm not hungry for power. I'm not hungry to get into government to say I'm in government. If I decide to go into government, I want to go into government to make a real difference. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, you look at the people who are in there. A lot of, a lot of us, let's be real. A lot of people don't understand what it means to be part of any organization when you're somebody like me. I know what it means. I know what it means to try to be in parties or any organization when you sometimes may challenge the, stru challenge the structure, the integrity of the structure, when you might have a difference of opinion and, and feel like you know, you're being muzzled. That's what I feel happens with these parties. I feel people get in there with a lot of enthusiasm. They get in there with a lot of desire to do different, but then they get up and then they get caught up. They might get in there and get a piece of a, a, a script, a manual that say, this is the way you're going to drive when you're inside here. You know, they put you in a big stadium, like frame of mind now. And they say to you, yeah, we know you got strong views and opinion on things. You know, I mean, think about it. The, the Minister for Education recently made a comment. And he said, and he emphasized it before he disagreed with one of his colleagues. He said one of the things, and I, I'm, I'm trying to be quoting verbatim now. He said something like, you know, one of the things he really enjoyed and liked about being a member of the National Democratic Party uh, government is that he can disagree without being victimized. I read into that thinking, the reason I would make such a statement is because sometimes, I'm not saying this is what's happening with him and all. Listen to what I'm saying so you don't misunderstand. Sometimes when you're part of something that might be presenting itself a certain way, you might have a challenge being somebody different. 
I know what that's like. So I am not running. No, I'm not part of the PEP. I'm going to support whoever I believe can make a difference in young people's life in this country. I know what I want to see. I know what I want to hear. I'm not going to tell anybody. I'm just going to listen to all sides. And anybody who pushing those things is who I'm going to support. You know? I got... You know, I guess five votes, as they say. When you live in a district, you got five votes. So that means five different people I can vote for based on how many parties, you know. So, no. <laughs> Not running for office, don't care to run for office. But I do want to come here every, every Saturday night whenever I can and try to make a difference. Because I know sometimes, you know, I don't have to be, I don't have to be muzzled. I don't have to be, you know, control a lockdown. And I'm not going to come up here and, 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 and give any inflammatory statement that I don't know to be true. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to put myself in jeopardy. But, I, I, you know, I, I'm going to come here and, and represent what I believe to be truth. And, and right now, I believe that, you know, whoever is in right now, at 50% of the time, I think they're doing a good job. I like some of the initiatives. And I can stand up and say that. And then there's some things that I think needs to be addressed. You know? And some of you have that same concern. So you can't say it or you won't say it. You don't want to say it for whatever reason because you feel might, you might be victimized. And it's real. I know victimization is real. Um, but somebody got to say it. Somebody got to put it out there. And somebody got to challenge the establishment. You know? So, new party, the VI party, government, the VI party, I keep saying government, I'm so used to saying the Virgin Islands party, government, but the Virgin Islands party, the VIP, um, for all of you loyalists out there, um, is having a, a, a Congress meeting, I think that's what it was, next month. So stay tuned, I think it's the 23rd of next month, if I'm wrong on that date, please correct me, get out there. Go do your, your due. If you still believe in a party, you still believe that it is the party of choice, go out and, and, and bring it back. Uh, the Virgin Islands Party, uh, party going to have a lot of work to build confidence and in, in, uh, show people that it fully understand the dynamics of what's happening in this country and how to bring it back and how to maintain, you know, uh, it's people. I mean, people are here hurting. You know, um, BVI Islanders feel as if, you know, they're losing their land. We feel as if we don't have any rights in the place where we were born and raised. You know, we, we're hearing all kinds of crazy stories. We can't substantiate them, but at some point they will come out. You know, we have, we have all kinds of arguments and disagreements, and, and we sometimes we have a lot of things in, in, in common. So we should, we should work on those things. But if you think they're the party of choice, go, go, go do your do. Um, if you believe that the National Democratic Party government is, the, is a party to continue with, with, with what's happening, then go out and do that as well. Go out and push that. Go out and, and, and support them, support the initiatives. But one thing we should never do in this country, one thing we, we should never get to a point, and I heard, I heard a legislature said it the other day, and I, and I thought you know, more of them should have emphasized it. Ladies and gentlemen, me care where you're from. I don't care if you're a BV Islander, born, raised here, or you came here and you decide to call this home. We should never get to a point where we can't agree to disagree. We should never get to a point where we want to kill one another because I support a, a different point of view than what you support, and all of a sudden we can't have a discussion on it. And next thing you know, we start talking about colors or lines or you stand the upside, I stand the downside. Why do we have to get to that? We don't have to do that. We are mature people. Mature people can have a conversation, disagree, and sit at the table and just move on. There's always room for middle ground. Always. I believe in that. I do not believe that just because I may not agree with what your left hand is doing, that I can't see that the right hand might be doing something good. So we should never get to that point. And I want to see that emphasized more and more and more and more. That we don't have to live like that. We don't have to have these lines 
and people wearing colors and next thing you know it's about this district is mine and ours and no 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 the BVI belongs to all of us you know this morning I was at Trailers Bay and I heard I heard somebody said something I was sitting there having some ackee and saltfish I love to go get my ackee and saltfish on Saturday mornings up there at Trailers Bay and uh, while I was sitting there there was a young man getting ready to go catch a boat to go back Virgin Gorda and the, and the fellow said uh, and the, and the next fellow was talking to him and he said come let's go you're going up Virgin Gorda the guy says yeah he said, I don't even like Tatola. So I ready to get off Tatola. He was on B Island. But I understand what he was trying to say. And I and I and I something played in my head that <clears throat> you know it don't matter if it's Tatola, Virgin Gara, and Agara, just for night, what? I love the BVI. I love the BVI. When and I and I <clears throat> in my business, I always tell people there's no one place in the BVI that's better. Are spe more special than the other place. It's one BVI. Every part of the BVI offers something different. What's your mood? People ask me all the time, which is the best beach? What is your mood? What, what kind of what kind of feeling you want to experience today? You want a beach with people on it and facilities? I have that. You want a beach that's quiet and, and nothing going on? I have that. But all of them offer something different because everybody's different. But overall, it's one BVI. And that's the way we want to, that's where we, we need to continue to push it. So the phone lines is open. Give me a call. Let me know what's going on. Let me know what's on your mind. There's a lot of things out there. Tell me what you, how you feel about <clears throat> the launching of the new party. Do you think it's going to make a difference um, in the lives of people in the BVI? You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. All right, good evening. Hey, good evening. All right, talk to me. Done. Hey. I hear the government gave me and the water rights. What do you think about that? The government gave who? Neil Bay. Neil Bay. <laughs> and you want to know what I think about it? Yeah, I want to think about that. You have any more questions or you want, you want to answer now and then you'll ask your other questions? I have a question. But before you go, let me ask you first. How do you feel about that? The guy is the vice president of water rights. The vice president of water rights. I, I, that's what I think. The water rights belong to the government and the people? Yes. Yeah. He's supposed to be the person in the company or nobody who comes here in water rights. Yeah. So that's wrong. Well, <laughs> it, it, it's challenging. Yeah. And, and there's, there's a few uh, establishments in the BVI who yeah. believe that the system that's in place right now will give them everything they want. And, and, and at some point, we're going to have to put our foot down. So if these are big issues for all of us, and those who are perpetuating it are still in power, then we need to get rid of them. Yeah, we need to. We need to get rid of them. You know, you know I, have, I have a big problem. I have a big problem with that. I have a big problem with anybody getting water rights. I have a big problem with anybody not providing free access to our beaches. You know, I have a big problem to anybody who's blocking off, you know, entrance into into beach areas and, and reef. I have a huge problem with that. And I feel personally, anybody that's coming to invest in this country, if they truly come to invest in the people and the development of the country, then they come up with a different mindset. But they come in only to pretty much take, take, take for themselves, then you're going to always deal with that. You're going to always have people blocking off beaches like Guava Berry Beach. You're going to always have people blocking off beaches like, you know, up in B-File and these areas up there. You're going to always have people in places like Smuggler's Cove telling you about um, non-public access. You know, th those kind of foolishness. We should, we should be clear. Yeah, you know, we can't want to know what the baby is We can't want to be... My friend, that's, that's just a start, and I think just the beach, you know. It's neighborhoods, it's communities. It, it, trust me, you know, it's coming. It ain't just the beaches. It's going to get more and more. And that's, how, that's why when you look at a lot of places, like in the States, you see them so divided and so segregated, because that's the same mindset they come here with. And there's people who are running the show who believe in perpetuating that type of mindset. That's why we're here having this discussion right now. So no, I don't support it. I think it's wrong. Anybody who 
if the government give anybody water rights, it should be fishermen, it should be the general public, it should be the people who will could enjoy it for the rest of their life, generations to come. Yeah, it's true. I yeah. believe that too. Definitely. Where are you calling from, Virgin Garda? Yeah. All right. How Virgin Garda looking at you? Have they clean up yet? Not yet. It's, it's right, it's right. Well, uh, we got a lot of work, man. You got you got people getting water, right? You got people building their own uh, desalination plant, not tapping in and supporting water and sewage. You got all kinds of things happening in Virgin Garda. So let's let's get it together. All right, thanks. All right, thanks. my brother. Thanks for the call. That's something I heard just now, down at the um, the luncheon of the PEP. Uh, I I hear Larry emphasizing and reiterating what. I believe Alan Christopher had said that uh, folks were, were granted water rights. Um, I'm not sure exactly what the, di what the dilemma is on that, but um, it's something that we could look into. But I tell you something, you know, what really, what really bothers me and what really hurt me. You know, I, I sit on today and, I, and, 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 and all of us can agree that we have challenges in our community with our young people. All of us can agree to that. But you know what really kills me? Is to hear people continue to condemn our young people and say they don't want to walk. They don't want this. They don't want to do anything. We have challenges, yes. But if a young person walking by hearing that conversation could easily get turned off and think, well, if that's the way they feel about us, then we might as well just continue to behave the way we behave. I think we should think and say opposite. We should continue to encourage young people who we see are having challenges doing the right thing and maybe try to instill some different way of thinking on them. And I think, again, it should start when you're young. So please, please, if we are saying it, others are saying it, and others are using it as an excuse to control and manipulate our system and we can't allow that we cannot afford that we got a lot of people who are trying who want to do for themselves we got to provide the opportunity for them to do it you want to speak your mind go ahead please all right good evening hey, good evening. How are you? i'm good yourself I'm, I'm good all right i just want to give my take on, on the water right uh-huh the thing that disturbed me about the water right is the fact that we don't have any mechanism in place where the majority of the people is against something and government still go ahead and implement it. We saw the same thing with um, the by water. The entire country almost against, but yet still that government was able to go ahead and deal with that situation how they wanted to. I believe it's certain things that should should be referendum. Certain things should have to go to the people. And uh, we as the people should decide what those things are. Yeah, yeah. But you know, uh, you said we don't have any mechanism, and I appreciate that comment. I think we do. We have the Constitution, and, and we, got, we, got, we got a few people who are willing to fight. I saw something, a headline earlier in one of the news sites, said, Freedom Fighters. We got a few people who are willing to challenge the establishment and challenge the system. We had it done and be violent. We had some folks, and right now those some of the same folks who fought to, uh, to, um, for, for Hands Creek and some of those areas, they actually went to court. And it's, it's ironic that some of the same people who fought on that fight are now laying down the towel. And they've even had some of our biggest names, investors, help support and sponsor some of their initiatives. So we do have we do have some mechanism in place, but it's who gonna pick it up and run with it and then it's who gonna support and sponsor it and help, you know, bring it forward. And, and, but you know my friend, there is a, a serious fair factor in this country. There's a nasty, nasty fair factor in this country. And I understand why so many people stay in their living room and, and, and have that conversation in the living room because, you know, it, it, things are hard. Sometimes they feel they might have to go and beg for some help and, and don't want to be ashamed or embarrassed. Um, they, you know, they, they might... It, it, take, for example, the launching. I, I want to get your take on that, too. Um, 
you know, some people might just want to come out and exercise their democratic right and listen. But because if they come out and go to that, somebody else might see them there and say, oh, he's or she's a supporter. So therefore, they'll stay away. They'll stay away. And, and that's the problem. We're creating this division in this, uh, this mindset in, our, in this territory. What do you think about the launching of a new party, my friend? Well, I, I think a, I think a, a variety is always good. I think it's good for, for two reasons, that um, the current parties are not giving the people what they want. They should have a choice of another party. I think it's good because this may encourage some of the younger people to get into the political arena. So I, I like the launch, but I would like to see what they're bringing to the table. Yeah. Another thing that uh, sort of like disturbed me is we have these elections and we really don't have question and answers to the running party. Absolutely. They just or debates. have their little marches, give you a little food and drink, and, and we go ahead and vote. Or debates. Don't forget yeah. the debates. That's the most important thing, I think, when these guys are running. We should see debates among them so we can understand how they think you know, what, what, what kind of um, things they're going to put in place if they do get in. You know, I, I, think, I think that's really what's missing out of our, out of our election process. Yeah, of, of course. And yeah. um, the people have to press for what they need. Yeah. Because the, the parties that are in power, they have no real incentive for change. Because right now it's, it's going to either be us or them. So we miss this fall, we get it back in two years. Mm. You know, so the people have to put pressure on, on the parties, pressure for them to deliver. And you can't know what, whether they deliver or not unless you ask the questions. Yeah. And you can judge by those performances. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, thanks a lot for the calls. Appreciate the comments. <laughs> Launch of a new party. You know, water rights being given away, people not being able to access beaches because, you know, development. I mean, at some point, at some point, it's like a pressure cooker. You know, if you, if you don't, if you don't, you know, sometimes check it to make sure that the stuff inside, the water inside ain't drying out. You know, to stop it from exploding. At some point, it will. At some point, it will. So... Anybody who's running these new parties again coming up, let, let's see what they're offering. Let's hear, let's examine, let's see if they really truly go and get out there and fight and represent the people's interests. And people's interests is the most important thing. All right, we're going to take a quick break. <clears throat> Keep the phone calls coming, no matter what it is. If you got something on your mind, share it, because that's the only way we're going to learn and feed off each other. So we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Say hello to the Digicel DL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4 inch display, front facing camera and a 5 megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast so you can do more, play more and share more. And choose to download from over a million apps available in the Google Play Store. The Digicel DL700, the latest addition to the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Be extraordinary. Digicel. again live and direct so text said NDP in again next text say VIP done and the text right after that say VIP all the way what about the PEP are they in are they out what's your take on the whole launching of a new party I like the, the last call he said 
Variety is good. I think choices are, are good too. You know, uh, I was reading one of the blogs on one of the sites and it said, um, they, they said a collision is coming and then they said after the collision, there'll be a collision. I don't know. You know, it, it's strange. Whatever collision you have and collision you have, at some point, whoever crosses, crosses over to whatever party they're crossing over and now will be governed by their manifesto. So, I mean, what difference does it make if it's a collision? As long as the legislatures can't get up and represent individual thoughts and ideas and always going to be governed and, and, and controlled by whatever mandate they have to agree to, you ain't going to get nothing different from that person. So, again, I, I, I found it kind of humorous when I heard the Minister for Education said that, you know, he loved the idea, the fact that he can disagree with the party and, and not, be, not be victimized, are really cute. And, um, you know, I thought it was very interesting when he said that. And, and for me, because I like conspiracy, it means that you know, there's, there's that fear of speaking out. There's that fear of going rogue. There's that fear of having an independent thought on something. And that fear is real, even for the politicians, because we saw it in the last government, we saw it in the government before that, and so there's no reason why it wouldn't go on in the next government, um, whoever they might be. So, you know, while they were having that debate, something else I really want to get your opinion on. The new law, if you haven't had a chance to, to read what the whole, you know, discussion was about, what the argument is about, you know, to equalize and balance the scale for our kids. You know, children who are born out of wedlock versus kids who are born um, in wedlock um, should have equal rights. But we should make it clear because people are, are you know, and, and, and it's not your fault. I realize the people who are pushing information don't push it and give us the information so we can read and dissect it ourselves. They push it briefly, give us enough from their perspective, and then the information disappear. And then we got help trying to find the information so we could better understand the issues. So we'll get to that in a minute. You all speak your mind. Go ahead, please. Yeah, good evening. Hi, good evening. How are you? I'm, I'm blessed. <laughs> this okay, I'm also a little small commentary tonight. Sure. And I want to bring to the attention of my administrators. Okay. In specific, in specific reference to Ninth District Virgin Islands. Yeah. Ninth District, okay. Yes, sir. We, had, we didn't have a lot of terms and rivers today, but we still had some. However, it, it wasn't a nice scene to see the ground sea is going over St. Thomas Bay Jetty and the ferry boats from Tartaria couldn't even land there. We have to put our passengers in the marina, that's a private facility. And, it, you know, it, it, it's, it kind of frustrates me to know that the previous administration went the next to acquire the property for a uh, commercial jetty, a dock to land freight and cargo down and match in the bottom. And when you go on the dock today, you look at the ferry area where the water is going over the dock, Imaginative bottom, the boats anchor there were quite still. And it seems to me that this is something that the previous administration went at length. We acquired property, and now look like the fire just get through on the top shelf to catch dust. And we decided, our minister telling us that he's putting another tear right next to the St. Thomas Bay Jetty. Wait, 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 wait stop there for a second. Stop, stop there for a second. Say that again. What happened? Well, we are told by our Minister of Communication Works okay. that we are putting another thing up there next to St. Thomas Bay Jetty. On the right side or that left side if you're heading in? On the left side, close so, to the entrance to the marina. Okay, if, means, if I'm heading in, it would be on the right, closer to the reef. Yes. Okay. That okay. means you have the same effect on a day like today, and you wouldn't be able to tie up inside, left or right. I just want to bring this to the attention of people. What's really going on? The previous administration went the lengths 
They said, oh, you had a property, they had it surveyed, they had a road demarcated. And for whatever reasons, some of us know that the whole government, our administrators decided we didn't do that. We didn't have two and a half million dollar extension right next to the previous one. So, That's a waste of time. So when they extend, when they extend, if he does put in that extra finger, right? What does that? How does that affect the cargo boat? Are they able to come in? Ain't that the same place where the cargo boats come in? I don't see very much difference either because it means the port commercial facilities and the tourists will still be operating from the same venue. But what I'm asking is, it, what I'm asking though is, are they going to move the cargo landing or how how does that work? If you put in another I finger guess, there, I guess one one would be for each one would accommodate the tourists and one would accommodate. We need to ask our minister these questions yeah. because he's taking it by his own. But it is too hard to allow us to build up theater without even coming to the people. <laughs> and they, 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 this district has various meetings and discussions on this. And the former premier went to, to, to great lengths and tried to push this acquisition of this property at Mansion Needle Bottom. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, most of us know that our administrator now chooses not to do that. Which is ultimately necessary because somebody is going to get hurt bad at that venue. Imagine you have a Sunday, a money, you're supposed to have like four or five thousand people coming. Imagine if the ground sea is still up. That means we have to take most of those people and the this property in the marina. This I find is not acceptable. It, it is not acceptable by no means. Yeah, yeah. Well, then that's one point that you have All right, to make. Before I, you move to the next point, I want to get. A solution from you though give me something mm -hmm. that we can work with if if they were listening right now and didn't think about this one solution what would be your solution um, we need to go ahead with our production at matching in the bottom we need to reallocate our cargo mm -hmm. that's what we need to do gotcha we need to take it away from the pier mm -hmm. and put it take away separate the passengers from the cargo yeah. and put the cargo down at Manchinil, but then where we propose the whole community, we had endless discussions, numerous times. And we just said, that was the solution. All of a sudden, now we're getting another pair of ram down our troops. That's not nice. And it doesn't do anything for the solution. Mm -hmm. But I just started to mention that today. Definitely. I just started to mention that. Definitely. And I, to, to go on further, I heard you ask one of the previous callers if the night the ship is clean, but yet, mm -hmm. I don't know what the name I came up, but it is a terrible state. If these comments are directed straight to the Southern News Department, or uh, so I said they changed the name to Waste Management. Obviously, there's no management of this waste. Because we have tons and tons and tons of old vehicles piled up on a site at St. Thomas Bay. St. Thomas Bay was the original capital of the U.S. We have a, a daily pond there, and you know, we have tons and tons of old vehicles, and apparently the ministry is not making any attempt to move them. We need to have them move from this island. And not only by look there, throughout the community, our people are getting used to hoarding daily vehicles and keeping them on our properties as if we want them decorated. This is not our way of life. This is a diversion, and the people we rely on to clean up this and change this is our minister. We need to come and take a tour of the district now and see what we got going on. You know, I've seen the district representative of Rodney Water today. And you have said, able, able to approach his office, you have said that it's not acceptable to want a that our department would really like to take action, but because of ministers directing who to back off or who to leave and what to leave, they can't get anything done. Definitely. It is disgusting. And I want to make a personal appeal to the minister to a torture words in order. Please, because it's terrible. This is the number one tourist destination among us in the video. We can't change that. Yeah, That's but yeah, you, do have, you do have some competition with Justin Dyke. But Carla, Carla, I love the discussion. Walk with me here tonight. I got another caller. Yeah. I want to get that other call in. And then when they, the rest no, of them I'm go silent I because they don't want to represent, I want you to call me back with the other points. I guess no deal. Go ahead. Walk with me. So yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hang up on you. I'm going to get that other call. And then I want you to call me back when the rest of them go quiet. 
we need to work together. Whether we can the TV right there and what, we need to work together to solve this problem. Absolutely. Yeah. Call me back. Call yeah. me back with yeah. other points, yeah, please. Man. You can't, you, you know, I, I'm going to do this tonight. I, I had a complaint the other day that, um, you know, some of you sit back and you get real quiet and, and, and you're afraid to call. And when other people call, they're too long. So, y'all speak your mind. Go ahead, please. Hello. Hi, good evening. You, you're live and direct. Talk to me. Hello. Yes, I'm listening. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can It's a live show. You can go ahead. You're listening to yourself on the TV, so you move away from the TV or turn it down. You ready? Go ahead, talk to me. What's on your mind? Okay, I, th I think we're having some difficulties. Um, Hello? Hi, good evening. Hello? Hi, we can hear you. Hello? Hi, good evening. How are you? I'm good. And you? Fine. Good. What's on your mind? Huh? What's on your mind? What? I think we lost that call. They're having some trouble. So if you're having trouble, just call us back. Let us know what's going on. But, you know, we have a lot of issues. We have a lot of issues. We can always have issues. But, again, what, what most of us are asking for is, is a democratic system that includes people. We have a call from Virgin Garda. We got calls from Tortola, you know, uh, saying the same thing. So two, three, four calls can't be wrong. Can't be wrong. So we as a, we as a, a voting, you know, people got to decide who we're going to vote for. We're going to vote for people who are going to continue to give away water rights and only because people are turning away from the beach and, and so forth, we find these things out. We, we're going to continue to vote for people who are going to, who going to sign investment deals, but then when it really comes down to it, there's no investment in our schools, in our, in, in, in our communities. That's what investment is about. Are we going to continue to give so-called investors opportunity to come in and make millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in our territory? Give them all kinds of hotel aid and tax exemption and so forth. But when it comes down to it, you know, we still got to go out and solicit and beg folks to come and contribute to our hospital. No, we shouldn't have to do that. We shouldn't have to do that. We, you know, $93 billion is what they said. The BVI uh, money that came to the BVI in 2013. It placed us in the top of the chart of countries around the world with foreign investment. Most foreign investment in any country. We're like number four, number five, and number six. A little dot on the map. A little dot on the map. That's what it said. I didn't write it. I read it. It said so. They compare us against countries like the United States and other countries. You know, you could see them on the map. You can't see us on the map. So here we are. Every, every week it's the same complaints. And until, until we get some change, we got to keep complaining. So don't stop. Don't stop. Keep doing what, what we have to do. So the phone lines are open. You know, I, I, got, I got beat up on this week, telling me when I got callers that call in with some real issues and real concern. They're on the phone too long. Now the phone line is wide open. So call and state your case. You want to speak your mind, please. Go ahead. Call and state your case. Hi, good night. Talk to me. Hi, good night. Talk to me. Yeah, we got a phone to solve in our phone. Say that again. Say that again. You have a little. Problem in that tongue. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not hearing you clearly. Talk directly into the phone. Right, 
Can you hear me? You have a little clotting in our song? Yeah. Okay. Okay, what does that mean? Yeah, clotting. Okay, what does that mean? Okay, I, I, I'm not no, getting it. Huh? Yeah, I'm not getting the gist of the conversation, so um, either try to call us back on a clear phone, or, or we haven't, we're going to continue to have a, um, a hard time understanding you, but I know you're trying to say there's something going on in North Sound, so we, we really want to know what's happening in North Sound, so we hopefully the politician can address it. Obviously, every time we talk about what's happening, we know for sure they're listening, and we know for sure that they get out there and try to make a difference, so call us back. With a clear phone, if you don't mind, please. You want to speak your mind, so uh, we want everybody to be clear as to what it is you're saying. You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. All right, good evening. All right, good evening. All right, I think we missed that one, too. Call us back. Call us back. I hear the phone ringing. If we're having trouble with the phone, we'll, we'll try to deal with it. Um... Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. But, you know, the issues out there, ladies and gentlemen, we really got to decide what kind of country we all want to live in. Those of us who can vote, because it's important. If we ain't voting for the protection of ourselves and not cheering them down the road, we're in trouble. We all going to be in trouble. You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. All right, good evening. Hello. Hi, right, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello. Hi, good evening. Yes, Sam? Yes. Good evening. Hi, right, talk to me. I can hear you. Just talk. Tell us what's on your mind. Good evening. Hi, talk to me. I can hear you. Just talk. Tell us what's on your mind. Hello. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, when you call, just go ahead and state your case. You might not be able to hear me back, but I am hearing you, and the rest of the folks out there listening are hearing you. So if you're hearing me, just go ahead and speak your case, state your case. Can you hear me? Not too clear. All right, that's okay. Just go ahead and tell us what's on your mind. We can hear you. Not too clear. All right, that's okay. Just go ahead and tell us what's on your mind. We can hear you. Okay, sir. We're talking about the poor people. We're talking about everything else but the poor people. What about we... The people who are getting $4 an hour. The working class. The working class people. It's about time for we get a change from the last. Right. From the last. The last election you was promised at least a tax break. Not only that, the poor people working at six places like right and I don't try to take away their 10%. Food going up every day. Every day food going up. Nobody's talking about that. We all talking about big shipping, this and that. Nobody's talking about the working class people. That's a true vote to stop in the sun and vote for these people. And it's nonsense. It's time for we get a, a, a race or something and do some about that and the food. I agree. It's ridiculous. It's both when they're working right there, but it's all over the place. And they want to take what they get 10% and they want to come seven dollars an hour. Ridiculous. Mm. I want to hear you talk about that, Sam. Definitely. I'm going to touch it right now. All right, you have a good night. You too. Thanks for the comments. <laughs> That's a big issue. So, we got three choices. We got a Virgin Islands Party government, um, Virgin Islands Party. We got a PEP, and we got a NDP. You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. Hi, right, good evening. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Talk to me. Mr. Yes, I'm here. How are you doing? Who's this? I'm here. How are okay, you Okay, okay. I thought you said your name. Sorry. I'm good. Oh, good. Listen, I just heard you, I just heard you mention something about 
um, people not contributing to the hospital, the new hospital development. No, 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 that's not what I said, but go ahead. Well, anyway, something to the effect, anyway. And then there's a letter on the radio asking people to donate to the hospital. Okay? Now, that might sound good in itself. But I have a different take on that, you know, Sam. Okay. So, when the hospital started, we had money that could have finished and be the, the, the hospital finished and finish it without looking wrong. The politicians then, who are in charge of that project, where is the money? By the five million and eight and ten million, to where is the money? And now, the politicians them know, the minister of the uh, responsible for health now, having a campaign on the radio, asking the rest of us <coughs> to donate money to finish the hospital. What do you think about that? I think it's crazy. Me too. I think it's crazy, but if you want to contribute, that's up to you. Well, I understand that too. But again, but, but what I'm saying, Sam, what I'm saying, Sam, is the people who wasted the money, it was supposed to go now out of their own pocket and put that money back to finish the hospital. Never happened. But that's not supposed to happen. Never happened. But then, but then, but then you got you got twelve to fourteen years of people who should be contributing them back to the hospital because that's what I'm saying. you have that much people who are involved pushing this money out that they know first of all they didn't have to push out um, the hospital was clearly clearly overrun cost overrun so yeah I agree with you the people who are responsible for signing on those those dotted line. Should should they should be the first one writing those big checks? Yeah, but we're supposed to replace the money. Yeah. We yeah. Then, we then, we then, we then, we then imply that we the public then imply them to waste our money. Yeah. We but imply them to manage it in a, in a, in a prudent manner. I agree, but so just that, so, so that we like get value for money. But just to clear up what I what I was trying to say <laughs> is that there was a report that came out this year, in in some of the local papers because it came out in another publication somewhere else. Uh -huh. And they spoke about countries that had some of the biggest foreign investment. The BVI was ranked in those countries, up mm -hmm. there. Meaning the amount of money that foreigners invested in the BVI machine, whether it's financial management, whether it's hedge fund management, whether it's ac money to for acquisition. It was simply saying that from the, the BVI ranked in those areas. I'm simply saying that we have a lot of investors who come into the country, and every time they come in, every no matter who, what government is in now, it doesn't matter what government is in because the arguments is the same for all government. We have a lot of people that come in and say, we're going to invest in your country. I believe when they come with the investment talk, there should be real plan to invest in not just, you know, paying rent in a building, but some kind of fund established for education to make sure that all cheering them, whatever the business is, have access to training so they know could be the employees and then eventually management and then eventually investors themselves in some of these businesses. That's all I was trying to say, is okay. that something okay. should be done in relation to that. Because we have all this money. We got people developing $500 million development. As Soon as they get their foot on the ground, we hear about gates and fence and rope going up in front of the reef, stopping people from coming in. We got people who are, are supposedly doing some expansion on properties, and now we're hearing that government gaining them water rights. You know, I mean, I'm simply saying that with all this money coming through the BVI, there should be more of it, some of it, going into some kind of fund to help develop the country. And we shouldn't be now at this point asking people to donate money to the hospital. But again, that's your choice. If you mm -hmm. want to donate, no, no problem. I gonna donate. Mm -hmm. I don't have a problem with that. But I, I think, I really think <clears throat> that, again, those people who wasted our money is who's supposed to bring it up, find it from where they find it, get it from, <laughs> and put it in the program so that the program could come to a completion. I understand. It's a lot of you money. I know, money. I know, I know that's not gonna happen. Yeah. But. I believe the rest of us, the country need to, 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 to light a fire under those guys and yeah. make them bring up that money. I understand. Then keep them steady, uh, wasting a certain money to the place. Mm -hmm. Then you talk uh, again about 
you didn't go? Lord Jesus, what a time. 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 Look at that. Listen Look. to me. Listen to me. As I see it, Sam, as I see, these political people ain't really um, genuine, you know. Mm. They ain't really genuine, you know. <clears throat> Up to this week, they, 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 um, they announced they had to give out some contracts. For instance, the, the, the Swiss contract at East 10. They gave it to one company. 1.7 million, is that 1. what it is? 1.7 million. Whatever it is, whatever it is, it's one plus million. Yeah. From 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 Chapel Hill. Yeah. They don't fat the be. Correct. Oh, I'm all right, love. A we put in pipes. Mm -hmm. So it's pipes, okay. So it's pipes. You mean to tell me that that contract couldn't have been shared up among several other people? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not against the guy or the company that got the contract. That's all fine. Mm -hmm. But what about others in yeah. the top, top economic time okay. that is here um, walking along with him and nothing to do? What about those people? This country is small. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I'm not against the companies that get some work done. I mean, that got some contract. Just all fine. But you mean to tell me that the government, look, look on the end of the way, they don't want to be selling it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You mean to tell me that he ain't got enough sense in his head to know that this, these work should be shared up among the, the contractors to the place? Yeah. Well, maybe maybe mm -hmm. at some point they, they're going to get to that. Uh, but you know, you, you, you know as well as I do, you sound like somebody, you sound like you're a little bit older than I am, so, and wiser than I am. And you know for a fact, the way our system, the way politics work is that, again, wh whoever you associate with, and, and you're going to put money, time, effort, conversation into backing them. I at the end that. of the day, at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you expect that when contract is sharing, that mm -hmm. you be one of them. I, 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 could, I, I could agree with that. But what happened to the other people? Other people don't have to have to eat too. And that and that's why that's why our, our, our elective elections process should be different. It should be it should be different. It, it should be in a way where you know individuals similar to what they do in the U.S. Virgin Islands um, should run on their own platform. If you could be part of a party, um, when you get up in a house, you you should have. Um, you should have an independent voice. If you don't agree with something, you don't agree with it, and then everything goes to an independent vote. Majority right. carry. I, I, I agree with that. Majority but carry. I have to say now that shame on the NDP government for doing something like that. I'm not against the guy who got the contract. Mm -hmm. But I'm saying, brethren, a cherry can be divided. Yeah. And you mean to tell me 1.7 million can't be divided? Well... Let me ask you this. Do you know if that, if that main contractor may be going to be doing some subcontracting? Well, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. But the government shouldn't leave that up to, to him. Mm. I see what you're saying. You see what I'm saying? So you want, you want, you want contract splitting similar to what they were doing in Virgin yes. Garda with but the road might, between... That might be the best way to do the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Okay. But until I think you want, man, uh, who knows what he's going to do with it. Yeah. You know? Well, well, I, but anyhow... I, 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 we'll have to wait and see. That's, my, that's how mankind is. <laughs> <laughs> that's man you look at. Well, but let's hope you and I don't fall into that behavior. Lord Jesus, we can't be fair. Let, let, well, uh, listen, I believe, I believe on a fair system all around. I mean, you know, there, there's people within, let's say, if I'm going to use this as an example. Like, say the tourist board, you know. Okay. I'm, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a contractor, so, you know, if tourist board have work to share, I always believe that we should create a list of uh, top to bottom and start from the top. If top can't do the work, you move to the next man. It's the That's same right. process I believe we do at a taxi stand. <laughs> you come, you put your number on the board, top to bottom. That's reasonable. Who's first? In regards to the size of the contract, as long as each person is on that list, is capable and qualified to handle any amount of work because you'll set your criteria, then it, let's say you have a list for people who can handle a $2 million contract. You got 10 of them. You start from top to bottom. Anything under $2 million is top to bottom. Anything over 10, the same process takes place. So it, it's going to be tough. You oh know that. But people are, not, people are not saying just in the world today. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> the world is not fair, but appreciate the comments.
That was that was okay. All right. All right, guys, keep the calls coming. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, the phone line is going to be open. We're going to be probably be hitting the last segment of the show. My virgin daughter, um, um, colleague, don't mind them. I want to hear those other points. You had some valid points. I agree with you. I do want to get some clarification on St. Thomas Bay because I don't think most people understand the dynamics of what you're trying to say. And you're right. There, there, there was some... Some, uh, some debate, acquisition of land up there to move the, the cargo um, uh, dock someplace else and maybe develop and clean up the area where, you know, people are coming in and, versus, and separate the two. You don't want to have cargo and people and passengers, you know, coming in. And then the people who, the lady who called about the $4, well, I got a lot to say about, about our, um, our um, uh, labor code, you know, but we'll get to that when we come back. We'll hit this break and we'll be right back. Say hello to the Digicel TL700, our newest best value Android smartphone with a 4 inch display, front facing camera, and a 5 megapixel rear camera. It's perfect for snapping and sharing. Plus, it's super fast, so you can do more, play more, and share more. And choose to download from over a million apps available in the Google Play Store. The Digicel DL700, the latest addition to the Digicel Android smartphone range. Make the smart choice. Be extraordinary. Digicel. Listen, I'm going to tell you guys right now, I am not going to read some of these texts. I appreciate them, though, but I can't read them. You know I can't read them, so say it in a different way. So, you know, I can read them and, and let people know what you're saying. Um, but uh, I, I can't touch some of them. Appreciate the text, though. But the phone lines are open, so give me a call. We got about 20 minutes left in the show. It's been good. Um, don't stop now. Continue. Uh, I want to touch this labor code thing. I believe personally that the labor code is a disaster, it's a disgrace. It does a lot of injustice to people, working people. Four dollars an hour slave, uh, slave labor, that's slave wage. I mean, there's no two ways about it. That's the kind of, that's the kind of uh, wage you get in, in some of these other countries where people are hurting, you know. Four dollars is slave wage. It is. I mean, I mean you, you look at the BVI and the structure of the BVI with our financial services, the amount of money that's being pooled in here. You know, uh, if we had steady flow of tourism, we got, you know, people who are doing well in life coming to our shores. You know, some of us got, you know, a lot, yes, but $4 for the working class is nothing to live off of. I know it. The labor code, the labor code started on the one government. It ended with another, and nobody yet has taken the time to address some of the issues. You know one of the biggest problems in the labor code? You out there working for somebody. You're working in a restaurant. They are now taking your tax, your, your tip money and using it as part of your salary. That's wrong. That is absolutely wrong. It is a shame. And I can call out my good minister. My good friend, he needs to really address that. And a person who runs labor, Ms. Ms. Reimer, you need to address that. It is wrong. It needs to be amended. That needs to come out. You can't have people out here walking. They working hard. They making four dollars an hour. That's yo eight hours. That's thirty-two dollars a day. Okay, so you do a great job. You do a really, really good job. Somebody leave a five-dollar tip. The next person leave ten dollars. At the end of the day, four people working, you guys were able to split up a two hundred dollars in tip. That's an extra fifty dollars you could take home. At the end of the day, you could go home and buy a little grocery on the way home, and you could live a little bit better. You could save some of that to add to the four dollars an hour that you're making. And none of our politicians, I mean, touching it. 
why that's a shame man oh wait maybe the reason why is because some of our politicians own businesses and they themselves are paying people four dollars an hour maybe some of our politicians own some of these businesses where they themselves are using the labor code to rob and cheat people that's wrong this it's inhumane it's wrong it's absolutely wrong we should take care of our people there man so I, I have no, I, I understand, you know, the whole concept, but ladies and gentlemen, if, you know, again, my good friend on one of the radio stations, he said, be the change you want to see. So the change have to start with us. So if we're going to continue to put people inside government who are not representing our philosophies and ideas, we'll never get any kind of change that we want to see. You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. Hi, right, good evening. Talk a little bit louder for me, please, and right into the microphone or the phone. Um, into the mic on the phone. All right. Okay. What's yeah. on your mind? Yeah, um, talking about this four dollars an hour thing. Mm hmm. We're talking about the four dollars an hour thing. I'm gonna have to repeat what you said because you're talking really low. Okay, talking about the four dollars an hour thing. I mean that is bad of itself, but when you look at people who is doing this job, getting four dollars an hour or even five dollars an hour waiting to the end of the month to get through this charge. The people who are sitting in the office is getting 7% or even 8% of your service charge, not even getting a meal to eat if you're doing a double shift, or only if you do a double shift, you're getting a meal to eat. You're leaving Tartola and going on another island to work. Only be given one bottle of water, whether it's big or small, and when you do a double shift, if you are on salary and you are being paid $10 or $9 an hour, you ain't getting nothing extra. So just imagine you are working from 10 o'clock in the morning until closing the night. And you are only being paid, let's just say, if it's just that basic, $80 for the day. And then you come in and tell me, oh, um, your tip will make up the rest of the money. That is crap. That is nonsense. That is that is high class slavery. Mm -hmm. That is high class slavery. That's what it is. Yeah, and I mean, I've been in that situation. I walked out immediately. You know, it doesn't matter what it is um, they wanted to do with me after there and then. But what some of us fail to understand is that we have a right. We have something called rights. And again, I remember I remember mentioning a while back. We are saying the way that the same way that they have a book that you should learn about the traffic roads or whatever mm -hmm, it is. Mm -hmm. I think labor should implement a system where when you come in, you have your work permit. They have this little book that they're giving you on your rights and what their codes and what they stand for. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people would not sit down and listen to you or even listen to what's going on in the school to understand what is going on because they're too busy trying to work to make more than five dollars an hour yeah can it even go to the supermarket can it even send the children to school and they have absolutely no help so this labor code really need to be looked into it really need to be looked into because there is a lot of people who is working extremely hard and it's actually getting nothing out of it and then boom they come to get laid off what the next thing they would say they got to go but mm. he wasn't able to save nothing. Rent is high. Food is high. The economy is good. The economy is good. We didn't come to take away everything what BBI have, but what it is we come for. We come to work and try to get an honest dollar. Mm -hmm. That's all we want. But that labor code didn't work that carefully. $5 an hour. Not even $6 an hour could sustain people who had children and have to go to school. I know they're implementing a new thing into the schools where they say they want to give the kids and them fresh food, no sodas. And I totally agree with that. Yeah. You know? But if you want to do all of that, it takes money to do that. And if you want part of the crime system to stop, you have to give the people what they work for. We're not trying to give us everything to, as they would say, you know, to send it back where you come from. <laughs> but we work for it. Come on. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful night. Thanks for the comment, Carla. Appreciate it. Keep watching and keep supporting the show. I will.
I agree with the caller. The only thing I'm going to say, though, ladies and gentlemen, is that I believe there's some... The, let's get to the car real quick. You all speak your mind. Go ahead, please. You understand? What's up? I'm here. Talk to me. What's being long work is in chit chat. Okay. I, I'm glad we could do yes. it tonight. And then, like I said, I'll be back on the box on the topic. Okay. You got a lot of feedback in the background. I'm hearing a lot of noise. Turn that down a little bit for me. Is that better? Uh, yeah, a little bit better. Okay, like I was saying. Yeah, turn, is the TV still turn up? No. No, okay. Go in the next room for a minute so we can have this good talk. Yeah, much like better. Much better. Like I was saying. Uh huh. I had a chit chat with the gentleman for one of the new party coming up. You had a chit chat with Sharanda today? No, a couple of days gone back. Okay, good. The gentleman who went, who went um, the Catspeed um, complex. Mm hmm. Yeah, and he told me that um, he'd be working on a new party. And I said, I wish you had the best of luck. I said, what I'm, what I'm saying, we need something, a change in the big way. I mean, we have gone through a lot. So, and we have people coming in, we have people going out. We are, you can say, we have busy ads, but we say, we someone to me to you, I say, because people are coming here thinking that we are the transport for them to get to the United States. Mm -hmm. And it's been happening to us over and over, and I haven't been listening, I've been seeing, I've gone to speak French, my next move is to speak French, I'm reading Italian. Because we have people coming to Tortola and they are not American, they are going into Tortola, they have more rights than folks that are so polluted. And we as Tortolians have to realize, yes, we need help in Tortola, but what kind of help we get in, we have to be careful what we're doing. Yeah. We have to be very careful because, yes, like the Minister of Education, um, health said, the parents have to take care of the children. You can't just say, hey, yes, I was there, I made a mistake. They have to be corrected. United States, we may have a child, and you don't support the child, automatically, they protect, they don't get tapped by the government. Mm -hmm. Automatically. Mm -hmm. Whether United States or not, they don't get tapped. And I'm saying, we in Tortola have to realize we have the right to do certain things. But we have to we have to look forward towards the benefit of what will happen for the future year coming. And this new party that's coming up, it's a mixture of a mixture of, of conscious people. And I, I heard somebody talking about them and say certain members who are in the NDP, VIP are going to join this party. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna be a mixture of people who were in running for council. They didn't make it, but they, they come back to the site again to see what happened. Yeah. So, well, what you, I'm looking at. Well, Carla, you know, you know what's unique is that you have you have the records of the Virgin Islands Party, you have the record and, and ongoing record of the National Democratic Party, and now you have somewhat of a record with some of the members in the new party. So. You're gonna have you're gonna have to you're gonna have to sit down and take three manifestos and compare them and, and do some check marks. And you're gonna have to say, ah, that's nonsense. Oh, that's good. No, they didn't do that. Yes, they did that. At the end of the day, you add up the pros and cons, and whichever one wins is the way you should go. You know, I'm not telling you how to vote, but I'm simply saying I, you got to use something as a guide. I'm a, I'm a, I'm agreeing with what you're saying because exactly that exactly happened because we have a young students come out of college and other high school who are prepared to vote but they do not know what's going on. Mm -hmm. They need somebody to give them some direction. Yeah. yeah. And that's why we, we don't have that in total for, for the new for the armed voters. Yeah, definitely. Well, um, we, 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 got, we got about two years left to uh, try to figure this thing out. So, um, you know, uh, like I said earlier, there's some, there's some good and, and what's happening right now that I don't have a problem with. And, and then there's also some things that I think um, I have a problem with that needs to, needs to change. So, um, you know, let, let's see what happens. 
Let's see what happens. Well, just keep your foot to the ground. Well, I can say we don't need to, need to come and take over because a lot of us do not know anything about the pound and shilling. Yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, point black, we do not know. We are being spent on making us from the time of a small child. That's right. And we do not know anything else but that. Like, like I said, from the time of a small, we were the ones supporting the United States Virgin Islands. Mm-hmm. Now the reverse process is happening. Mm-hmm. We have to go there to get what we need for a bit because we don't have it here. That's right. And it's too expensive. Yeah. Every every Friday, every Friday, Friday at night, or every Saturday morning, the boat goes to St. Thomas, and when the boat comes up from St. Thomas at 6 o'clock, the amount of food that comes from St. Thomas, constantly collecting money like crazy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And it's something that we, we, try, we, we try to correct it, but it's not going to be corrected. Got you, Carla. Anyhow, anyhow, enjoy, enjoy your show. Yes, well, appreciate you watching and uh, keep keep uh, taking part, you know. I'll do that. All right. Yeah, guys, so as I was saying earlier about this whole labor code thing, the labor code is a disaster. It's a disgrace. And it's like it promotes slave wage and slave labor. You know, I don't see anything good in it. And, and the government needs to, any government, this one and whoever else come in, needs to address it. You want to speak your mind? Go ahead, please. Hi, good evening. Good evening, sir. How are you doing? I'm good. Yourself? Okay, yeah. Um, let me just make my rage that you all are talking about. Mm-hmm. I do believe that uh, I used to be something of the label all saying that, um, that people in the workplaces could form their own union and come together and um, decide what their what they can do about even the um, minimum wage and the uh, and the and the, even the service charge the thing that it makes you know and I think people should uh, at least get together you know and discuss mm-hmm. the, 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 um, the service charge and the um, and the tips and, and that kind of thing you know because it's unjust for people to take people um, take some service charge and pay them a little bit. Yeah. You know, and uh, and it's something that the, the labor department is supposed to look into. Mm-hmm. You know, but um, when you have people in the labor department and they're looking at, and they're having other interests on the outside, you know, so that causes a lot, a, a lot of conflict. Yeah. You know, so that is something that that, that need to address. You know. I agree. Yeah. So you know, have a good night. All right. We appreciate the call. Appreciate the comments. Well, in the Constitution, you have a Bill of Rights. And one of those Bill of Rights give you the right to assemble. And if people want to get together, uh, do it, you know. Get, restaurant workers should get with other restaurant workers and, 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 and come up with some ideas how you can, you know, all get together and, and, and fight this issue because it's a problem that's going to be affecting you for a long time if you don't take a stand. And whether you're from here, you're from here, as long as you're working and you're being treated this way, you have a right to be treated humanely, not inhumanely. And it's, it, to me, it is an inhumane situation, you know, to go out there and work for nothing. And then owners and operators of these businesses are now taking your 7% and, and pretty much using that to make you, to pay you as salary. That's not right, man. It ain't right. My God, it ain't right. You know, and you will really think that the people out there who are, who are supposed to be representing your cause and your issue will be really, truly um, seeing that this is a problem. But like I said, maybe some of these people own businesses, so we don't know. Um, as far as, you know, anybody running for office, again, back to the whole, you know, uh, new party lunch, hey, congratulations, big ups, you know, but let's see, let's see what what's in the booklet. Let's see what's in on the table. Let me hear the argument and the discussions. Let me see the debates, you know. Let, I, I, I really, really think that people should boycott any rally if these people don't agree to debate the issues with each other or against each other, you know. I really think that we need to boycott. Don't go to none of them if, if we can't get them to come together. I mean, you, you look at um, democracies, you know, 100, 
a thousand times bigger than the BVI. And they have debates. They have, they have that debate so people can really sit down and examine the issues, listen to the questions, and see how each person or each candidate um, say that he or she will, will be able to deal with it. Uh, and, and it's only healthy. You get, you get, uh, you get a, a meaningful um, uh, um, um, understanding out of something like that. Also something that really needs to be pushed more, and I commend the NDP um, for the last campaign, they did, they did have some question and answer um, session, and those were good. Those were good because a lot of people such as myself were able to put some things out there, some conscious things that maybe you know, they know but didn't want, to, didn't want to acknowledge, and people were able to see, well, hey, you know, that's a real problem because it's happening in my area. Uh, instead of you know, waiting until after they get in, and then all of a sudden you got to make an appointment to go see them just to, to, to voice your concern on these issues. So, uh, it's been good. It's been very good. I'm glad that we were able to cover a variety of, of, of issues and topics out there. One thing that I really want us to, um, to all rally behind, though, is, is this, this, uh, this equalness in, in, in with, our, with our children, them. children out of wedlock, children in, um, in, uh, who were born of a, a, a husband and wife. Um, it's only right. It's only right that these kids have access and have their rights address. Um, the, next, the next big thing I would like to see is where you're born is where you're from. I want to see that debate in the house. You know, um, so Minister of Education, uh, Minister of Communication, Minister of Health, you know, Minister of Finance, I want to see that debate. You know, all children and born here belongs here. They represent here. They love this country. They're going to born and raise in this country. They're going to go out and represent this country. At the end of the day, they're going to want to come back to this country if we treat them right and take care of them. So that's the debate I want to see out there next. You know, that this, this fear, this fear factor, this, this, uh, this, this mentality that, you know, came down from Europe and in England um, that we continue to perpetuate on our chair and them. It's not right. Let's, let's do something about it. And we can. Um, <clears throat> I think the ombudsman said it. We can do something locally to address that problem immediately. And then the next step will just be another UK issue, but that's fine. Um, there's stages in it, and, and, and one of those stages, we can rectify right here in the BVI. So, ladies and gentlemen, I am out of time. I have no time left. It's been really good. I'm glad that you guys were able to get in on a conversation. So please remember, speak your mind is where we, we, we get those issues out there. And we make sure that the politicians or the people who are, looking, who are looking at the show and recording the show on their behalf get the right information. They, they get from you the sincere concerned citizen, uh, the voting citizen, the voting population. So without any further ado, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you guys next week.